Hello, in this video I'd like to share with you some improvements in Retovo planes. The new feature is the support for the mirrored or symmetrical patterns. And thanks to this, now you only need to set up one side of your mesh uh, cloth and if it's symmetrical the changes will appear on the other side automatically. And this feature works both for the mirrored patterns, like in this case, and also for the symmetrical patterns like here. Mm, and to set it up, it's very simple. You just need to tell the system that the other side is symmetrical and you do it by selecting one of the vertices from your retopo planes and extruding it over to the other side. Same for the symmetrical patterns. You can also use this option for the symmetry in y-axis and to say that it's y-axis, you just need to extrude the vertices again. And here you can see that the pattern is mirrored in the y-axis. We'll take a closer look into that in the further part of this video. But now let's move on to the second feature, which is the thickness. And here, um, how it works is that you will see that on the side of the extruded part, um, the number of cuts is related to the number of subdivisions. So you will be able to reconstruct the subdivisions uh, once you apply your modifier. So let's uh, check it now in ZBrush um, if that works. And here you can see that if we go to the geometry tab and we uh, click reconstruct subdivs, yeah, it works. And for now I'm calling this feature experimental as it works for most of the cases, but in some very complicated patterns, it might uh, be a little bit buggy. And now in this part of this video, I'd like to present you um, some of the workflows that you might use uh, when working with Retopo planes. So for this, I have this hoodie, um, which is the basic garment from the Marvelous. And let's start by setting up UVs inside of Marvelous, which is great when you are, for example, done with Retopo and then you want to go back into Marvelous, apply some changes or some feedback. You can do that and go back with the new simulated cloth and if the UVs didn't change, the retopo will jump right into the place. So let's uh, separate the UV islands so they are not overlapping each other. And also it is important for the this feature that I showed you before uh, regarding the mirrored patterns that the patterns are actually mirrored. Uh, so remember you can flip the, pat the UV islands in here uh, both horizontally or vertically if needed. So now our uh, UVs are set up and I believe our mesh is ready for the export. So let's select the pattern and uh, let's pick uh, OVJ selected. Let's call it hoodie. And in the settings we want the thin welded and for the, uh, for the scale we want the 0.1 percentage, which will make it uh, jump uh, right into the correct size inside of Blender. And now the uh, usual drill of starting the retopo. So uh, let's um, go into the assets where we have our retopo planes assets. And um, here let's start with the 3D two patterns. Let's apply it to uh, the cloth and let's apply rotation and scale so it lays flat on the floor in the correct size. And now let's drop Retopo main into the scene. And uh, yeah, before we begin, we can choose the simplify option for the flattened uh, pattern so the system will work much faster. And now uh, inside of Retopo main, we just pick the cloth pattern. And now we are ready to start Retopo. Also, let's change the preview in the viewport to the material preview so we can see the colors of the UI. And now we are ready to start Retopology. Let's split the screen. And in this view, we'll see our garment in 3D. And in this view, we can work with our patterns. You can see this new part of UI, which are those 
yellow crosses, they show you the parts where the patterns meet, so where 100% you will need uh, the points of the retopo planes to be. And once again, let's use the symmetry, so we just extrude one of the vertices and the mirror is created automatically. Let's adjust the scale of GUI so it's more visible. We can change the snapping distance to something smaller so there are no weird overlapping when the patterns are too close. And let's change the density to also something lower, uh, which uh, helps for the final mesh to be more equal. Okay, and now let's proceed with the retopo. Let's move over to the sleeves. And you can see how fast this tool is. You just uh, pick four points on such a pattern and the quad fill is uh, automatically generated. And now thanks to this mirror, you just grab one of the vertices, you extrude it over the symmetrical pattern and there you go. Let's do the same for the hood. Oh, and this one feature, uh, this Blender feature that I highly recommend, which is the walk navigation. I highly recommend to put it into the quick favorites tab, uh, which helps with the rotating camera around the pattern in 3D, or sorry, the garment in 3D. Okay, let's go back into the patterns. I will start by uh, creating a base mesh for the mm, whole cloth mm, for all of the patterns and then I will concentrate on the details and on the correct edge flow. So now uh, for the back side of this hoodie I will create this big uh, quad fill but later I will just copy the front of the hoodie since it has very similar shape. And now let's go back to this front. So here we want a different uh, edge flow and for this we'll create some additional cuts and we will need a one vertice which will have uh, five edges connected to it and we need to subdivide this edge and uh, with this uh, sort of retopo plane you will see yeah that this is the nice uh, topology for animation and when we add the smooth uh, low poly it uh, is even nicer now and yeah, uh, we'll do the same now for the neck part of this cloth. So yeah, let's create a cut over here and once again a vertice with the five edges connected to it. And again, we subdivide this edge. Yeah, and such uh, topology is correct for the animation. There is this one red indicator which tells us that something is wrong uh, but we need to find where this point is okay and it's on the hoodie it's just a little bit off and now it is correct and the red indicator disappeared so now that the front part is ready we can just uh, duplicate it over to the back since the patterns are very similar so let's just delete it now and uh, copy paste it over there and let's now adjust the points and once done you will see uh, the topology like you can see if you haven't seen uh, my previous videos there are a lot of helpers to guide you through the process now let's just adjust a little bit uh, the topology and now that we are done you can see that there are some additional cuts uh, that now will be will need to happen at the sleeves on the sleeves so let's move on to the sleeves you can see those red indicators again and once again we just create a couple of cuts and adjust the vertices so the process is pretty simple like uh, designed in such way for it to go into the muscle memory uh, so it is uh, becomes very automatic after a couple of times let's adjust the GUI again and let's create the rest of the patterns and since the rest of the retopo is pretty straightforward if you don't mind I will speed up this video now and in the next part of this video we'll take a closer look into the mirror settings 
if we were to use the y-axis and how it works and also this cool way of using double planes when you have a change back in Marvelous and we want to import it again we'll take a look at how the retopo will jump back right into the place if the UVs are the same. All right, and now that our retopo is ready, let's go back to the mirror settings and let's see how the mirror settings for retopo planes work if we were to use the Y axis. To showcase this, I will create this rectangular shape and let's simulate it over the head and bring it back to Blender. Now let's follow the usual drill, 3D2 patterns onto the source garment and the new retopo main into the scene. We'll need to create a, another, another uh, collection with the retopo planes. Mm, we only need a one uh, polygon for it. So let's uh, delete all the others. Let's uh, set it up. Let's pick the cloth pattern. Okay, and now let's see how the uh, retopo planes work if we were to use the y-axis for the mirror. So it is very straightforward. We just uh, place uh, the points in the correct uh, way and now we just extrude one of the vertices and we extrude it again to say uh, to retopo planes that the symmetry is in the y-axis. So just remember to extrude this vertice twice. And now let's move on to this other cool thing which is how Retopo Planes handles the reimported mesh from Marvelous if we were to change something in the cloth's shape. So for that, let's go back into the Marvelous. Uh, we don't need this anymore. And let's grab uh, the sleeve mm, and activate it again. And let's change its shape. And what will happen now is that the shape will change. However, the UVs stay the same, which will make retopo planes jump right back into the place once we import it back to Blender. So <clears throat> now let's uh, select once again uh, the hoodie and export it back into Blender. And when we import it back in Blender, uh, all we need to do is to apply UV to patterns onto it and yeah either by from the asset browser or just copying the modifier and now we need uh, to change the source pattern in the uh, retopo main here for the newly imported mesh and once it's done you can see that the retopo is adjusted and when we add some more subdivs all the details are transferred. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, we can take a last look at this new thickness feature and uh, how it works once we export it over to ZBrush. Uh, let's see, over there, uh, once imported, we can go into the Geometry tab and over in Geometry tab, once we hit Reconstruct Subdiv, we have the cloth with the lowest subdiv and all the transfer details ready for further sculpting or detailing, which is nice. So if you'd like to keep up with all the improvements to all my tools, which by the way you can find on Blender Market or Gumroad, make sure to subscribe to this channel. Thank you.